Hello friends, my name of course is Antan Ego. Welcome back to my critical palace. I'm not going to do the voice though because I need some original content. Red Dead Redemption 2. This was the most critically acclaimed game of 2018, topping God of War and the legendary Super Smash Bros Ultimate. For good reason too. Of course, before we go any farther, spoilers ahead. This game was an absolute masterpiece. When it started out, John was all like, Dutch! Dutch, I'm trapped on a mountain! And then Dutch is all like, My boy, we need more money to get to Tahiti! And then you got Arthur who's all like, Alright, Dutch, just one more score. <coughs> Dutch, I got TB! And then Micah comes in like, I like men! Bang! Oopsie, Black Lung's dead! From start to finish, this game had me immersed. You play as Arthur Morgan. He's an outlaw all his life, and he's aware the times are changing and outlaws are becoming extinct. To have a good protagonist, character development is a must, and Arthur Morgan's journey was full of ups and downs, and no matter your in-game honor, he always comes out as a better person. Arthur Morgan starts out as a man that will naively do anything for his gang with Dutch at his side almost all of the time. His one main obstacle though is Micah weighing him down, but he counters that with sass. Further down, Arthur starts to realize that Dutch is steering away from his original intentions for the gang, mainly because without Hosea, Dutch's level-headed wise right-hand man, who died. <laughs> Dutch's ideas are slowly being poisoned by Micah. Arthur then has another obstacle when he gets tuberculosis, and then realizes he starts to think twice about his allegiance to Dutch and the gang. Which then leads to his inevitable death. A captivating story with a sad end. Oh wait, was it the end though? The first four chapters of this game are quite exceptional. There is such a variety of missions Rockstar gives you. You can herd sheep. Pretty scattered. Let's get them all rounded up. <coughs> For. Just wait till the first game, you fucking piece of sh You can have a drink with Lenny! There's even a mission where you rob this guy's cousin. You can choose to rob him in broad daylight or choose a stealth approach and wait for nighttime. That choice gives the player a sense of control which really boosts immersion. Everything seems to be going quite well until you get to this fucking island in chapter 5. From this point on, the gameplay takes a major nosedive in quality. Throughout the duration of your stay on the island, all of the missions mainly consist of massive shootouts with ancient as gunplay mechanics. From GTA 4 all the way to Red Dead 2, the only changes have been minor graphical and sound changes. Rockstar needs to understand that just because something trademarked works, doesn't mean it can't be changed. This might not be the best analogy, but Skip the Dishes just changed from red to orange, and that was alright. Just some food for thought, no pun intended. Let me just uh, clarify really quick. When I say they didn't make any uh, big changes to gameplay, this was one big change. You can now pull up the, I'm gonna call it the immersion menu, where you can now call out, rob, greet, and antagonize people. Um, I really love this because robbing people is so much more fun because... In past games such as GTA 5, you'd point a gun at someone, they wouldn't really have any reaction except run away, and the only way to rob them was by shooting and killing them and taking their money. So this is a big step immersion-wise. I'm not asking Rockstar to reinvent sliced bread or anything, but a little bit of a change from what we're all so used to, I think that would be good for the future games to come. Anyway, when you get back to the main map hoping for some sense of familiarity, shooting gallery type missions are a lot of what make up the last part of the story. The gameplay never really reverts back to the variety that Rockstar had in the first four chapters, such as the sheep herding and the drinking. Even in developmental missions, which should probably move the progress of the story along quite nicely, they're still focused around these shooting gallery type missions. And that's topped with unsatisfying character conclusions. You have all these characters that have been built up to seem to play a role in the end, but end up dying halfway through with little to no reason of progressing the story. This don't feel right. Now it don't feel right. I could have told you. <laughs> 
later. Let's go, Lenny! Wait, what? What? No, Lenny! Did that feel out of nowhere to anyone else? He's dead! Oh, God, no! Now that I think about it, without an award winning story and wonderful characters, this game would be simply mediocre. But I guess we can't forget one of the last pieces of the puzzle. The free roam world is so magnificent. I had so much fun spending hours just soaking in this wonderful scenery. Everything available to you in the free roam was absolutely breathtaking, from hunting a giant alligator no smaller than a dinosaur, from getting jumped by night folk, the voodoo cult, from spending an hour trying to beat Alfred in poker. Everything was just so memorable, like, I, I don't know about you, but I won't forget my adventure with that old bastard Alfred when I finally beat him. I even overlooked a KKK ritual. Granted, I shot them all the shit after, but it was it was interesting. And most of all, the music in this game is absolutely spectacular. Gunfights are brought alive by spaghetti western type guitar riffs. In saloons, there's usually a guy in the corner busting out some witty and fun piano chords. In sad somber missions and moments of the game, Rockstar meets your needs with soft and ambient melodies. Like, I don't want to say anything, but they got fucking D'Angelo. Like, whose dick did Rockstar have to suck to get D'Angelo? This is my favorite part, where he comes on here and he's all like, Dude, uh... Peter or Thunder. Oh man, I fucking love the Angelo. Hello everyone. Back again. Anton Ego here. I was in the booth taking a close look at all of this, and after close examination, I've decided to give this game a 4 out of 5. Don't let that dispute the fact that the story is an utter 5 out of 5. Where the 4 comes from is the gameplay, because that can just sometimes be an utter turnoff. Thank you for stopping by and watching my newest review. I appreciate this tenfold. Well, let me have a rule and a saw and a board and I'll cut it. I'll climb up a ladder with a hammer and a nail and I'll nail it. Well, we worked so hard to build a little house. Did I?